Hey, how's it going, YouTube? How y'all doing today? It's a little chilly this morning. Just a little bit, it's about 40 probably out here. Got these cattle some grain for breakfast. Man, so look at this fella right here. <laughs> he's bowed up. Okay, he's ready for market. <laughs> About, well, okay. So in, oh, uh, two, three weeks, I'll start liquidating these cattle. I'll start taking these cattle to market three, four, five at a time. So look at him oh my gosh he he is that, that that is right there when i when i say an animal that is ready for market in good conditioning that's him right there real thick back leg look at that oh my gosh he's just good full looks healthy yep he's got he, he's ready for market so in about two weeks two three weeks i'll be taking these animals to market three four five at a time and then I'm going to see what kind of money I make on them. There's still a lot of things in this farm that need to be invested in. I need equipment. I need to pay bills, etc., etc. So that money will do a lot for me. Once these animals all go to market... Well, okay, so big plan right now is to get these animals to market. I'd like to get them all at market at around 500, 550, up to 600 pounds. That's fine with me. Once these animals all get to market, I'd like to line that up just about right as, as, as best as I am able to with hay season. So as soon as these mar animals get to market, I would like to be within a week of these animals all having gone to market I would like to be planting hay I am going to be planting Sudan grass so that means for me to plant this field I have a real heavy clay soil field real real heavy clay soil which is good for certain things it's, it got its, it's got its pros it's got its cons one of its pros is that it holds on to just about anything very well. So if I put fertilizer on it, it'll hold on to that fertilizer very well. If it rains, it'll hold that water very well. One of its bad, one, one of its sort of not, well, okay, to look at it as bad is incorrect. Um, one of its things that I kind of need to fiddle fart with is it's real, 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 um, Oh man, how do I put it? Well, they call it clods. So these, this soil is real thick. If I till this soil, like imagine if I had a whole bunch of sand. If I tilled that soil, that sand, those sand particles would just kind of fall apart. There, there, there would be individual sand particles everywhere. But when I, when I till up clay, this clay soil will like come out in pieces like this. It'll be big old pieces of soil. So I need to break those big old pieces of soil into smaller pieces. Um, it's like if I had like art clay, I got a handful of it and then just balled it up like this, it would stick together. But if I got a handful of sand for uh, like if I had sandy soil, if I got a handful of sand and put it in my hand like this, it would just all run through my fingers. So that 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 is that, that um, is one thing about clay that I need to really um yep i need to i need to i need to get that situated so yep i'll need to till this field i'll need to uh break those clods up i'll need to uh, have a soil temperature over 60 degrees fahrenheit for me to germinate sudan grass uh for me to germinate Sudan grass properly, soil temperature needs to be over 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Soil temperature is different from air temperature. It takes a lot more. Soil heats up as well as cools slowly. So if it's 
if it's been like 85 degrees for two months then let's say it drops to 30 degrees for a night that soil will still be way warmer than 30 degrees soil temperature is different from uh from 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 air temperature oh my gosh my cattle are making a break for it i gotta close this gate give me a second this guy he <laughs> I'll close this gate. Hey, hey, fella. Hey, fella. Come on. Come on. This, this, this he, he's a little bit dangerous. I don't know what, I, I thought he was a limousine. I don't know if he's a Highland Scott or like a Highland cattle or something like that or a limousine or something, but he's dangerous. He'll kick me. He's one of the animals. That I, 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 um, I just completely leave him alone. He'll sniff me. He, he, he will sniff me and all that, but, um, just getting up behind him is real dangerous that animal in particular uh i, I keep an eye on uh I, I know i know which one of my animals are dangerous um I, I'm, I'm cautious around all of them but he, he's particularly dangerous so i'll be keeping this one right here this animal i'll be keeping her I, i'll put her in a uh in a small pen this one right here i'll put i'll put her in here in this pen then i will I will uh, feed her up to uh, about, I'm guessing about 1,200 pounds. I'm going to get her to about 1,000, 1,200 pounds, somewhere around there. Then I'm going to process her. My big whole thing about calves like this is if I, um, animals like this, they, uh, yeah, if they want somewhere else, like if, uh, it's either someone like me processes them, uh, feeds them to processing weight, or they pretty much go to a uh, processing yard immediately because, well, just because of her cleft palate. Um, they're, they're, it, it, it's, someone like me has to either pick her up and, and to feed her out to give her a life, or she's she's gonna get uh, she's gonna get cut. She's going to get processed practically immediately. So, yep. Okay, uh, I need, yeah, I need a, uh, I need a soil temperature over 60 degrees. I also need some rain to, to, to plant Sudan grass. I need some rain. I need a little bit of a moisture. So when I till the soil up real good, when I break these clods up, I'm going to break these clods up with a, a cultipacker. I'm going to till this soil with a disc. Then I'll be uh, seeding this. Uh, I'm going to be drilling this seed into this field. My field needs to be. Uh, my soil temperature needs to be 60 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. I need a little bit of rain as well. If there's too much rain, that that that's also a problem. So I'm keeping my eyes open. I'm I'm just. I call it diligence. I think diligence is important. There are factors that are beyond my control. There are things that, you know, that diligence does do a lot for. So I'm keeping my eyes open. I'm watching the weather channel. I, I, got, an, I got an idea of what I would like to do on this field this year. I just need certain things to sort of line up. They always line up in, certain, in, in a certain way every year. It may happen at a different time things line up though when when they line up i just need to that's when those gates open that's when i need to be uh, getting after it so i just need a little bit of rain then i also need to think about harvesting harvesting sudan grass it'll happen at about 45 days after planting if it's too wet after those 45 days it'll be uh that that hay will uh just sit on that field if if I cut hay, then it gets rained on. It'll it'll rot. It'll be it'll be of uh, it'll be it'll be a. Uh, I mean, it's worthless. I mean, who who would buy that hay? Um. So yeah, I also need to think about harvest. Oh, here goes the big fella, big one. Yeah, he's gonna be going to market here soon. So yep, I need to think about when I'm gonna be harvesting this hay too. It's almost go time. Here in about, uh, in, in less than two months now, these animals are all going to market. I'll be on a tractor working this field. I'll be planting hay. Uh, and then I'm also looking for, uh, to, to buy another field. I buy another field. I'm looking to buy uh, uh, about 20 acres. Because here locally in my area, if I buy a 20 acre field, if I buy a 20 acre field, 
that cost me eleven hundred dollars a month it cost me uh let's say uh i pay uh 20 acres at ten thousand an acre would be two hundred thousand i take an 80 percent loan to value loan on that property it'll cost me about eleven hundred dollars a month when i go to 30 acres that's the uh, ten dollars an acre or ten thousand an acre that's three hundred thousand when i go beyond that though when i start looking at fields at about four hundred fifty thousand I'm looking at 115 acre fields. So there's a, a massive price break for larger fields for 80, 100, 120 acres, something like that. There, there's a, a big price break. Prices uh, per acre drop substantially at those larger acreages. So either, I, I, I've been looking at a lot of uh, farmland, looking at a lot of real estate. So what makes most sense is to either me buy 20 acres or me buy 115 acres. If, if, if I'm looking to buy 30 acres, it's a waste of money because I may as well fork up a little bit more extra money than get four times as much land, three times as much land, three, four times as much land. So right now I'm looking at getting a 20 acre field. If I get a 20 acre field, e e I, 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 I've been thinking about how i'm gonna how i'm gonna work uh th this uh this uh me getting more land thing out so if i have money saved up i figured it would be better instead of putting forty thousand down as a down payment if i get a line of credit put up as collateral for this farm or if i collateralize this farm for a line of credit then i could take that line of credit to buy a farm then use the money that i have in my bank instead of putting it as a down payment i could use that money to pay the monthly uh to pay the monthly uh debt service so it would you know if, if i had uh twenty thousand dollars saved up even if my monthly payment went up to you know uh, 1250 1400 a month for that extra forty thousand dollars if i had uh twenty thousand dollars saved up that 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 would uh cover more than a year worth of uh worth of uh worth of uh payments to the bank which would give me time i have all the equipment that i need right now to 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 grow hay so on 20 acres if i went from uh if i had 20 more acres i i could more than more than i, I have equipment already the equipment that i have right now would, would I, i'd be able to farm those 20 acres with zero problems so I have I have zero need for for more equipment as of right now to buy 20 more acres. Once I get that money, once I get a uh, bank to give me a line of credit, I could just use that line of credit to buy the property, then use my cash I have on hand that that I save up from uh, from just working this farm this year to pay for a year's worth of uh, uh, debt service expenses use my equipment to farm that land produce an income on that land within a year it, it would take me less than a year to produce an income on that property then i could use that income from that property to pay for that property itself it make me a few uh if i combine both of these farms i'd make maybe a few extra thousand dollars a, a month a couple thousand dollars extra a month i'd also have a, a large sum of equity i would have two fields that i own so with, with a long long term goal of being i could put equity from this farm i could get a line of credit put together from this farm as well as that field to buy 115 acres that would be the long long term plan because there buying a 30 acre field is just kind of a waste of money i mean it does you know i would get a bigger pool of equity in, in reality though i would s substantially benefit i would benefit substantially more from having 115 acres for a few, a few uh, maybe an extra $750 a month compared to a 30 acre field just because I'd have way more cash flow opportunity. I could grow way more hay on 115 acres than I could on 30 acres. To raise cattle too, I need grass. Uh, before I can raise cattle, I need to have grass. Before I can raise livestock, I need to have grass. So once I have hay, when I have grass, I have money. That's how I think about it. Because when I have grass, I can feed cattle. When I have grass, I can sell that hay. I can make money. So 
I need grass. If I have 115 acres to, to work on, you know, I could raise, you know, I, I could grow hay on 100 acres. I could grow hay on 100 acres, raise cattle on 15. I could do whatever I wanted at that point. You know, but I, I need grass. I need I need space to grow grass. When I have a lot of grass, I have a lot of opportunity. These animals, if I had uh, grass is what puts weight on these animals. So this grain, it, it, it's like giving them a slice of cake every day, which is great. For me to really put weight on these animals, I need grass. So, yep, whether it's hay or whether it's fresh, uh, fr fresh grazing grass like they have right now, I need grass to put weight on these animals. All right, that's it for me, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.